I am so grateful to the Rabbi Nishalaylam that I was able to write another book for Art Scroll. The name of the book is From Sorrow to Celebration. The book is about the three weeks and Tisha B'Av, which is a very sorrowful time in Kalal Yisrael, of course, because we discuss the destruction of both Bate Mikdash. But it's called to celebration because we have also about two B'Av, which is the day that people went out and were able to find Shidduchim. So let's first talk about the three weeks. And I'll tell you something fascinating, which I never realized myself. The three weeks from Shiv Asaba Tamas until Tisha B'Av are 21 days. You can count those, three weeks. Three times seven is 21. But there's a fascinating Toysvis in B'chayrei Stav Chesamad Beis. And he says, you know that these 21 days, they correspond to another period of 21 days in the Jewish New Year, in the Jewish year. And that is from Rosh Hashanah till Hashanah Rabbah. Imagine that. That is the time of tshuva. 21 days from Rosh Hashanah to Hashanah Rabbah. And that's the same 21 days between Shiva Asabatamas and Tishabav. And you know what that's based on? It's amazing. In Yirmiya Aleph, Pasik Yir Aleph, it tells us that Hashem said to Yirmiya, I'm going to show you a vision. And he shows him a vision and he says, Mata Roya Yirmiya, what do you see? And he says, Makel Shokade. He sees a staff, a branch of an almond tree. Now, an almond tree blossoms in 21 days. That's 21 days. Rosh Hashanah to Hashanah Rabbah, Shivas Abatamas to Tisha B'av. And the flowers are white. And the symbolism here, Rashi tells us in Yirmiya Aleph, Pasuk Yir Aleph, Libun Avoynes. That's a time when our sins are bleached. They become white, they become pure. And it happens one of two ways. Either through tshuva, which is what we're doing between Rosh Hashanah and Hashanah Rabbah when the decree is sealed, and also never sometimes through suffering and punishment, which happened during the second base of Migdosh and the first base of Migdosh, those 21 days between Shiva Asabatamas and Tishabav. Of course, it's interesting. The Chazal tell us that Tishabav is a Mayat. That's a happy day. That's the day Mashiach could come. But I feel that what we could add additionally is if we take seriously these 21 days from the three weeks, from Shiva Sabatamas until Tisha B'av, and we do tshuva, then that could be a mayat. That could be a day of rejoicing of tshuva when Mashiach would come. This story happened with Rabbi Matis Yol Solomon, Zechat Tzadik Levrocha. He passed away just a little while ago from when I'm making this video. And I must tell you that his son told over this story during the Shiva. Somebody came out of that Shiva and called me right away and said, you've got to hear this story. It's a great story. You see, Ramat Yisrael Solomon, every Friday night, of course, there was a long line of people that would line up so, to say good Shabbos to him. One Friday night, there was a little 12 and a half year old boy. And he came over, put his hand out, and he said, good Shabbos to Mashkiach. He said, can I ask the Mashkiach a question? Ramat Yisrael said, of course. He said, the little boy said, I heard that there's a circus that's coming to Lakewood. And I bought a ticket to go to the circus. But I heard afterwards that the Mashkiach said, somebody said that the Mashkiach said, it's not appropriate for a boy to go to the circus. It's not proper. But I already bought a ticket. Can I go? And Ramat Yisrael said, now that you're asking me, I have to tell you. It's not appropriate for you to go. So the boy smiled, half smiled, and said, okay. He wished to Mashkiach good Shabbos, and he started walking away. And the Mashkiach called him back, he gave him his hand, and he said, we're still friends, right? And the little boy smiled, and he said, yeah, we're still friends. And the boy left. Six months later, Rab Matzio was driving, and he said to the driver in the car, take me into that shul. So said, where are we going? Where are we going? He said, you come inside with me. You'll see. He came into the shul. It was a Thursday night. And it was that boy's bar mitzvah. And when that boy and his father saw Ramat Yisrael, they couldn't believe it. What in the world is the Mashkiach doing at their sons at his bar mitzvah? And the father ran over. He said, 
Shalman Leicha, Mashkiach was so honored that you came, but what made you come? Mashkiach said, can I say a few words of Divrei Bracha? Can I give a little talk? And the boy is so flustered, he can't believe that the Mashkiach is going to speak at his Bar Mitzvah. How in the world did he even know that he was having a Bar Mitzvah? And Mashkiach got up and he said this story. He told the story how the little boy came over to him and asked him a question about the circus. And at the end he said, I said, we're still friends, right? And he said, yeah, we're friends. So I ask you, said Ramadisio, if we're friends, how could a friend not go to his friend's bar mitzvah? That's why I came here. How beautiful is that? The mashkiach, the holy tzaddik, goes to a little boy's bar mitzvah because he said, we're still friends. That's Avas Chinam. Let's learn a lesson from this great story. And so I want to tell you something about retaining and maintaining the Torah that you learn. It's one of the greatest stories I ever heard. And I heard it from Rabbi Yankov Golinsky, who was a very famous speaker. He was a Rosh Hashiva Chadera. He was a Magad. He spoke in many, many places all over the world. And he, was, he learned in Varduk. But he told me a story. Now, Rabbi Yankov Golinsky was a very short man. And as a boy, of course, he was also obviously very short. But he had energy for 10 people. He was a very feisty young man. And his parents didn't know where to send him to yeshiva after his bar mitzvah. Now, they weren't going to send him to Slabotka because in Slabotka the theme was godless Adam, how great an individual was. And this little boy felt already he was great. So they decided they're going to send him to Navardok. Navardok is where they kind of broke people. In Navardok and El, could you imagine? They would go in, they would tell the boys to go into a library and ask for a hammer or go into a store and ask for a suit. And people would say, go into a grocery store and ask for a suit. And pe the guy behind the counter said, you're crazy. And they would embarrass him. And they had to stand there, not say anything. They had to learn how the carrot could, could, could be broken. That's what Navardic was all about. Self-control, even in difficult situations. So he told me the story that he comes in to the Navardic yeshiva and the mashkiach is sitting behind the desk and his face is hardly over the shelf of the desk. And he says, I'm here. And the mashkiach says, then what do you mean you're here? He said, well, my father sent me here to learn in the yeshiva. He said, that's not how you come into the yeshiva. He said, you gotta learn some musa first before you come into this place. He says, go down the block. Down the block, there's a shul. Take a safer, learn some musa, and then you come back. And Rabbi Yankri Golinsky would laugh when he told me this story. He said, I got thrown out of the yeshiva before I even got accepted. And he went down, it was late in the afternoon, and he comes in, and in those days, in that city where the yeshiva was, there was not electricity. So people would learn by candlelight. And it was almost twilight. He comes into the shul, it's dark. He opens up the door, and he sees at the front table, he can only see the back of a person, and the person is learning by a Gemara. He could see that it was a big Gemara. And there were two candles that were burning. That gave the light of what that person was able to see in the Gemara. But the person was singing a Gemara. And Rabbi Yankov would sing it as I'm going to sing it for you. And the Gemara is in Ervin Nundalet Amad Aleph. That same Gemara that we quoted about the Luchais being engraved in stone. And it says like this. And this is what this man was singing. means grab and eat, grab and drink, the high alma, because this world, the Aslina Mene, that we're running away from it, we're not going to be here forever. is like a wedding. And the man was saying it over and over again. What does that mean? Grab and eat, grab and drink. Take advantage of every time, every moment that you're in this world. As Rashi says, it's like a wedding. A wedding is gorgeous as it is. A chuppah is gorgeous as it is. It only lasts a certain amount of time. Grab and eat, grab and drink. Accomplish as much as you can. Because we're not here forever. And the Bali Musa, they understand what this Gemara means. Grab and eat, grab and drink, do mitzvahs, do Torah, do your Shemayim, do all the good things that you can, while you can, because you're not here forever. Make the most of every moment. And Rav Yankov Galinsky, even as a bar, understood that that's what it meant. And he went back to the yeshiva, and he said to the mashkiach, I heard what I'm supposed to hear. 
And he was accepted, and of course, he became the great person that he did. And you know when he told over this story, you wouldn't believe. He told it over when that young man who he saw learning, he became a great person. One of the Gedurli Hadur, that was the stipler. Rabbi Yaakov Yisrael Kanievsky and Rabbi Yaakov Golinsky told that over at his Leviath. That was the Hesper that he told. And how did the stipler become as great as he did? Because he was Chatoi V'yachol, Chatoi V'yishtei. He grabbed and ate, he grabbed and drank. Not food, but mitzvahs and Torah and Yer Shemayim. And that's what we learn from Shiva Sabatamas. That's the day that the Luchos were broken. And that's the day that all of a sudden now there would be Shikhas HaTayra. If you want to remember the Tayra, grab and eat, grab and drink. Make the most of every moment. And then you'll reach your potential. We'll never become like the stipler, but we can all become great. By Chatoi V'yachol, Chatoi V'yishtei. So I want to tell you a fabulous story that I heard from a dear friend of mine. His name is Ephraim Bartfeld. He's a pediatrician in Waterbury, Connecticut. I had the schos to do brisson for him when he was in Queens and also when he was in Waterbury. And he told me this great story about his father, his grandfather actually, who grew up in Mexico. And his name was Jose and his wife was Berta, Yosef and Bela. Listen to this great story about Chavez. You see, Yosef and Berta, Jose and Berta had a silversmith store, a silver store, and a medallion, and they sell, sold many, many mementos of Mexico, and they had it in the central business district of Mexico, and they were making a very nice panosa, but they were always closed on Chavez. And one day, the association, the business association of Mexico came to them and said, Jose, listen, you gotta stay open on Saturday. He said, why? It's my Sabbath. That's the holiest day of the week. Of course I'm not going to stay open. He said, no, you're causing the other businesses to lose money. He said, me? Why? He said, because you see, when you close on the Sabbath, a lot of people don't come to this business district because mainly they want to shop by you. So all the other stores are complaining because when you close, people don't come to shop there and they're losing money. He said, look, I feel bad about that. I'll come right, I only live two blocks away. I'll come right after the Sabbath and open my store, but I cannot come on Shabbos. And they said to him, we're going to fine you. Every Saturday that you remain closed, you will get a stiff fine if you don't remain open. He said, look, there's nothing I can do. I am not staying open on Shabbos. Now listen to this. The first week he remained closed. He got a fine. Second week, also got another fine. And before the third week, a Mexican policeman came over to him. Now, in Mexico, it's known that if somebody is violating something and he wants to get away with it, they just gotta bribe the police a little bit. You get stopped at a red light. I once heard somebody told me in Mexico, a red light is a suggestion. But you know, a lot of people just drive through the lights, but if they get caught, they give a couple dollars to the cop and he lets them go. So this, Officer, the Spanish officer, let's call him Mr. Beltran. So Mr. Beltran says to Jose Bartfeld, look, I know that they want to find you, but this is my district. If you take care of me, I'll take care of you. In other words, what he was saying, listen, if you bribe me every week, then I'll take care of it. You won't get arrested. You won't get the fine. And he said, okay, fine. And he gave him an envelope. And sure enough, he was not fined that week. Not the second week, the third week, all the one. This went on every single week. One Shabbos, there was a man that was driving in this area of Alameda. That's where the store was. And the guy was driving crazy. I don't know if he was drunk, but he ran onto the sidewalk and he smashed the window of Mr. Bartfeld's store. And the glass was broken and everybody was able to come in and take medallions and take all the silver that was there. It was terrible. And the next door, the fellow, the neighbor who had a store ran to the Bartfeld home two blocks away and he said, your store has been crashed into. You gotta come there and protect it. He said, it's the Sabbath. I'm not going to the store. He said, but everybody's gonna rob you. Makes no difference. It's my Sabbath. I'm not going to the store till tonight. The guy could not believe it. That night, right after Havdullah, Mr. Bartfeld ran to the store, could not believe what he saw. Officer Beltran was standing there with two guns. 
not letting anybody get into that store. And Jose Bartfeld said to him, what are you doing here? Listen to what Officer Beltran said. He said, I know what your Sabbath means to you. And if it means that much to you, it meant that much to me. I've been here since that crash, and I didn't let anybody go in. You're probably not missing one thing. Take care of the store. Could you believe that? And he didn't lose a thing. Maybe one or two things were taken before Officer Beltran came, but I want to tell you something. Not only did Yosef and Bertha and Bela keep the Shabbos, but they gave great chinuch to their children. Their oldest son, Yisroel Yehuda, went to Tells. They sent him there even before his bar mitzvah. And he's the father of Dr. Bartfeld. And the second son, imagine, Avram, he learned in Ney Yisroel, he learned in Tres Yishalayim, he learned in Gateshead, and today he's the Rav in the Beis Yisrael Shul in Toronto. Hashem takes care of those who take care of Shabbos. Ki Eshmer Shabbos, Kel Yishmereni. Let's try on this day of Shavasa Batamas, when we read about Shabbos, to make a little bit more as a heroes in our observance of Shabbos. Mm-hmm.